questions um, without further ado uh, with his two registrars who are helping him, Zubin and Sunel. Um, I'll introduce Mr. Mahmoud Aksvala to continue part two of his uh, hip examination. Yeah. Um, Thank you very much, Juan, for that. Very good of you. And uh, all the other mentors who've joined. Uh, is David here as well? Yes, David's here. David, yeah, yeah. Because David, we, we three of us did the history and welcome to the other men mentors. So we just move on. Just to recap, last time we stopped at history. Uh, Shuan made an important point is that today and for the next session for hip examination of the hip, we'll try to go through the just the basic uh, system of examination of the hip. More importantly, really, it's the way you talk and how we do examination correctly. And then if it's going well, then for the future, we can do things like difficult cases or the cases you most likely will get as a short case like arthrodesis, uh, impingement, etc. But it's no use going onto that or seeing a case of that if you don't have a system in place. Okay, so today's uh, is for a system. Just imagine, I'm gonna give you a scenario. Once again, we are doing it fresh. No one else is really doing this interactive type of examination anywhere. So, so let's try to be interactive and let's imagine it's real life. And once again, it's the same patient who you took a history from. So imagine the same candidate last time uh, has taken a history. It's a left hip, tip, uh, 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 let's say it is a, a arthritic hip. And this time I want you to start by uh, coming towards a patient. You've already introduced yourself, but just introduce yourself one more time. And I want you to uh, tell us how you're going to tell the patient what you want to do. Okay, so I want you to say, you know, remove your clothes, or whatever, whatever. Let's see the phrases you use and then let's take it forward. Uh, Shwan, imagine now I'm going to uh, move away from the screen and I'll okay. point you towards the patient. And I want you to imagine that it's your intermediate case. Uh, so uh, I'll get, my, my, can you see the patient there? Yes, I see him. <clears throat> okay, so now, uh, just, uh, yeah, you're coming. I'm, I'm, I'm there as, my, as examiner. I'm standing somewhere here. And Shuan is standing on the left of the patient, somewhere there. Uh, so you've come in. And uh, yeah, go ahead and start talking to the patients and tell me what you're going to do. Um, yeah. His Hello? name is Mr. Smith. His name is Mr. Smith. And you've already taken a history. So now you tell him, thank you, Mrs. Smith. I've taken, you've, you've given me a history. Now, Carry on. So please speak. Yeah. Okay. First of all, please, could I get a chair to sit beside my patient? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 Hello, Mr. Smith. I'm Muhammad Ibrahim. Could I take a history, a brief history and do examination with you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And now imagine that you've taken the history, which is very good. And now you said, thank you. Now we're moving on to the examination. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Routine hip examination, I do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've taken a history. The problem was the left hip, and now you're you've, you're going to tell him what you want to do. So, yes. Um, okay. Um, just for a reminder, Mohammed, this is an elderly gentleman who's uh, having problems in his left hip with decreased walking distance and a couple of other comorbidities. You went there last week. I think you mentioned this last week. Yeah. So. Please go ahead. So the history is of a, yes, as Shwan says, a typical 70 year old old man with an arthritic left hip. Hmm? <clears throat> right, just for everyone in the group, this is a good opening line. And what I'm trying to tell you is please, there's a statement which you can all use, and you can use it for foot and ankle, for hip, and for knee, and for spine. So I don't want any fumbling or anything. You introduce yourself like you have, Mohammed, very nice. And the next thing you say, Mr. Smith, I need you to remove your trousers. I need to remove your socks and shoes. Leave your underpants on and have a seat. Right? And then when, and say, as you're removing your shoes, please pass me your shoes. So Ibrahim and everyone else, this is a statement which means you will not forget examining shoes and you will not forget saying what you want him to do. And at the same time, you'll tell him, you look around and say, Mr. Smith, do you have any walking stick? So in other words, in one statement, you've covered everything which you will not miss. A, removing your trousers, socks and shoes, pass me your shoes. So you're not going to forget examining the shoes. And you're going to look around and say, Mr. Smith, do you have a stick? Now, Mohammed, say all these things together. 
in, in one statement. Yeah. And everyone, this is the best opening line. Okay. So the minute the footwear comes in your hands, give me both. So can you see the camera now? Yes, yes. Okay. So I want you to first look at it like this. <laughs> yeah. And first of all, the first statement will be there's no external heel raise. All right. Very clear. The word is external heel raise. Okay. Yep. Then you're going to put your hand inside like this and say, and look and say, there's no internal heel raise. Happy with that moment? Yeah. Yes. Happy. Okay. Yeah. Then you're going to put your hand inside and look for the, what is the commonest orthosis you get in feet will be the medial arch support. Do you agree? People put a medial arch yeah. support inside. So you're going to put your hand inside and check. There's no medial arch support, right? Then you're going to turn over the footwear like this and say there's no undue wear pattern of one foot over the other, right? Correct. And then you're going to say there's no, look at it at the front here. There's no stretch suggestive of a bunion or a bunionette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll repeat again for you. The minute that while the patient is changing, you're going to take the shoes and you're going to yes. start external heel raise. Yes. Internal heel raise, yeah. medial art support, the art support, undue wear pattern, yeah. mm -hmm. and stretch of a bunion or bunny net. And this gives a good opening statement because while the patient is undressing, you are doing this. All right, Mama? All right. With that? So, this is what you're going to say for everything. Lovely. Uh, Shwan and David and the others, is there anything you'd like to add or should we move on? No, um, but it's, it's something that is very important for, I can, I can, I'm just reinforcing what you said, very important. Uh, proper foot examination, sorry, proper shoe examination for anything yeah. lower limb is critical. It's one of the first things you should do for any yeah. part of the lower limb examination. Um, and look for your anything like walking aids and or uh, support. Correct. And, and that's what I was telling you. You know, you're so tense in the exam. You know, we are, you're comfortable with us here, but you can imagine in the exam how tense you'll be. So you're going to forget walking aids and you're going to forget shoes. But if you practice this for every lower limb, you'll never forget it, right? So this is the statement you'll make. And when it comes to the shoes, just a little, I, I, I don't know, harp on it. But if there are no negative findings, you don't have to say there's no external helix, but at least you're looking for it. So I don't want you to just pick up the screws like shoes like this, do this and put it down. You're going to look with a purpose, which is like this, then like that, with your hands inside, turn it over, and then looking like that. Yeah. You may not have to say it, but at least you're looking for it. And that's done. Now, uh, Shwan, you can, thank you, uh, Momo. That was very good. Your talking style was very good. Don't change that at all. You were very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Just Joanne, to, anyone else for the yeah, next part? Just beforehand, um, everyone else, please um, don't bother with the introduction part because you've already met this patient. But for future reference, don't ask the patient, "Can I take a history and examination?" That's what they're there for in the in the exam. It's a, be a better introduction. Is hi, my name is. Thank you for coming today. I'm going to ask you a few questions, or I'm going to ask you to do a few things. That's it. Uh, don't bother with. Uh, uh, kind of, I'm going to do a history examination. They know why you why you're there, so it just wastes time and makes it feel awkward for you. Okay. The only thing okay. where I, where I I I, uh, I agree. Let's say thank you very much. It's just that sometimes implied consent is implied in a manner. That's the yeah. only reason why I. So, I, but you saying thank you and coming there is good. But I only that statement is only whether implied consent. But. Uh, don't, the message that both of us are giving is don't make it long. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Exactly. Um, one of our mentors uh, is typing a message. He's uh, reminding people that sometimes there isn't any shoes um, mm -hmm. because they're wearing hospital slippers. <laughs> Still make the effort. Say, I'm looking for shoes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lovely. Exactly. Thanks for that. Um, next person. I'm putting the patient back there. Imagine now he's unrest. You've done your shoes. You've done his walking aids. And he's unrest there in front of you. What do you want him to do now? He's there. You want him to stand up? Yeah, please stand up, uh, Mr. Smith. Yeah, back inside. But in real life, in the stress of it, you probably haven't. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so therefore, just to remind you again, the front is front. Now, tell him what you want to do. Yeah. Can you turn around for me, please, to the side? 
Yeah. So I want you to stand like this and say, can you turn around so you can face that wall? You know, I want you to point with your hand and say mm -hmm. that wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn around and face that wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. now he's turned um, around. Mr. Smith, can you turn around and face that wall, please? Yeah, lovely. Very clear. Fantastic. Now imagine we are still left and he's standing a bit like this and a bit like that. And just put up your foot a little higher. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Now, 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 do you agree that what you had talked about from the front, you should have said from the side? You know, yes. the foot, can, you, can yeah. you mention it from the front? No, right? Yeah. You can, from the side, okay. And now what do you want him to do? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, I, uh, so there is a good spinal. That's fine. Yeah. 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 You've, told, you've talked about that. There's a spinal, you're going to talk about the spinal yeah. load as if. You may have mentioned some points, but for everyone in the audience, let's stick to some points for all examinations of the body. All right. Mm -hmm. So in inspection, let's all agree. We're going to examine from the front. We'll examine from the side and examine from the back. Is that right? For every yeah. joint. Yeah. Now from the front and from the back of side, the system will be, which I keep is let's put three headings. The first big heading is swelling and wasting. All right. Just keep that as one. Mm. Second would be scars and sinuses. And third would be deformity. Hmm. All right. Where, where are you, Mokhtar? Uh, Abdullah, I missed you now. Where are you? Yeah, I, I'm here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So the third is deformity. And just stick to that. So don't jump from one to the other. Hmm. So let's say from the front, imagine he was standing up. The, the first thing you say is, you don't expect in the hip to see swelling. Is that right, Abdullah, most of the time? So you won't say there's a swelling in the hip, right? But you expect to see some wasting. So you'll say, I notice there's left quadriceps wasting. So you're standing up there. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. say, they, and I don't say from the front because the examiner knows you're looking at it from the front, but mm -hmm. there is quadriceps wasting. Next is a scar. So there's a scar. If it's a classic scar, you can describe it as a classic scar. So if there's Smith-Peterson scar, you say it's a Smith-Peterson scar. If it is a posterior approach, you say it's a posterior approach. If it's for the deltopectoral in the shoulder, you say deltopectoral. All right. Mm -hmm. So if it's a classic scar, say that. And now for scars, everyone, I want you to describe it in a particular manner. So we'll say there's a scar, which is a Smith-Peterson scar in the anterior aspect of his hip area, which is healed, which is of how many centimeters length approximately. So we say about 10 centimeter length. So we have talk about where it is. It's a classical scar or not. How long is it? And it has healed throughout its length by primary intention. Happy to use that, Abdullah? Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine, and you'll get a scenario in the exam, which uh, uh, our previous uh, uh, mentor who gave the excellent talk on prosthetics had in his case, is you'll get a patient with scars everywhere. So you describe this, suppose the scar had healed in the lower part, not by primary intention. I want everyone to say, this scar is healed by primary intention throughout its length, but the lower end of the scar has healed by secondary intention but I do not see a sinus or I see a sinus with surrounding redness. Yeah. So you've covered that yeah. part. And I notice that it is, there's no hypertrophy in the scar or the scar is not hypertrophic. Yeah. So yeah. you want to repeat that Abdullah? So we finish scars. The third is deformity. Now, you know, from the front and my mentors and Shwan, I'll ask them, but you said that there's limb length discrepancy. All you can make out from the front in a hip is whether the ASIS of one side is lower than the other. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So why don't you just say that? And now this is a tip for hip examination for the future. Mm -hmm. The side where the pathology is, so I'm telling you now for, for the Mr. Smith, the pathology is the left side, which is here, right? Yeah. You'd mention whether that side ASIS is lower or higher, not the other side, you know? Yeah. Right? Because one has to be lower, one has to be higher. So the mm -hmm. tip for everything is the pathology side is what you'll comment on the ASIS. So yeah. imagine this is lower, right? So what are you going to say? I notice. I notice that the ASIS on the left side is lower than the other side. Yeah. So, or if you want to be the anterior superior leg spine on the left is lower than the right. Yeah. That's one phrase. Another phrase which you can use, and I'll ask the mentors what they prefer. You can say there's a pelvic tilt with the left side being lower than the right. You know, make it mm -hmm. simple. But whichever phrase you want to use. Please write down the phrase, practice that phrase, because that's what you're going to say on that day. You're happy with that, Abdullah? Yes. Yeah. Now you want to move to the left. So we'll be moving in. Can you face the wall, please? Now, I don't mind. There's always a controversy from all of you, whether you should ask the patient to turn 
or whether you should walk around the patient. Please do whatever you're comfortable, but stick to one. Don't do one one day and the other one day. And please don't change your pattern for an old person and a young person because you're so stressed in the exam and an older person will look young and a young person will look old. So just stick to one, right? So if you want to make the patient turn, turn all the time and practice by saying, facing the wall. Now from the side, sticking to the same things, Abdullah, you agree there's going to be no swelling wasting at all because you don't see swelling wasting from the side, right? Yes. So say, don't mention it. Scar sinus is important. So if there was a scar, which is your classical lateral scar we use, you'll say that, but there's no scar. And third for deformity, you're going to say, Abdullah, exactly. Let's start from the top. You're going to say there is a exaggerated lumbar lordosis. There isn't. Mm -hmm. Say that, please. Yes. Uh, there's no exaggerated lumbar lordosis. Yeah. And you can say the hip is in an attitude of flexion. You agree? Yeah. And the knee is in an attitude of flexion. Flexion. And the foot is in attitude in, of plantar flexion. Yeah. Yeah, plant direction, or you can say the ankle is in equinus. Yeah, ankle ankle is equinus. Yeah, or let's put it straight now. You can see Sunil making it straight. Uh, now. So now, and imagine he still has a flexion of the hip and knee. Just verbalize this you're going to say there's a flexion attitude of the hip. So, so there's a flexion attitude of the hip, flexion, flexion attitude, attitude of, of the knee, knee and uh, but the foot is plantar grade. Yeah, plantar grade. Yeah, yeah. So these are the options, and then we turn at the Turn around and face the wall, please. So when Mr. Smith is facing the wall, at, once again, you're not going to, swelling wasting, there's going to be no swelling, but you're going to talk about hamstring and gluteal wasting. Is that right? Yes. So mention it. Say, I said, I, there's no, or there is, use so, whatever you want, but practice it. There's no gluteal wasting. There's no hamstring wasting. So there's no obvious gluteal or hamstring wasting. Yeah. And don't talk about scars and sinuses because no one really operates from the back, right? So don't mention it. And don't walk about skin changes and things. We're not going to see that there. And as far as deformity is concerned, you've already mentioned all the deformities, right? Yeah. From the front. So yeah. you don't have to mention it again. But don't forget the back. And say, I notice when he's standing, there's no obvious scoliosis. Yes. Right? So that's, and then, so in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is in front back side, you've considered on the, on the hip, but talked about one joint above and one joint below, right? Yeah, and that's all you do. So in a shoulder, it'll be cervical spine. It's with the elbow, it'll be shoulder and wrist. Yeah, so don't go all the way up. So if you're talking about the knee, you don't have to talk about the hip. You don't have to talk about the spine. It's just one joint above, one joint below. Happy with that, Abdullah? Yes. Yeah, very good. Excellent way of talking. Shwan and uh, any of the others, anything you want to add for <laughs> this part? Uh, don't forget to look at the other hip okay. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very correct. Exactly. Yeah. I, I personally, uh, I when I when it for my inspection, I look start from the shoulders. I make sure the shoulders level. I think anterior superior is fine for the pelvis level and all as you, as you mentioned. But um, um, mm -hmm. okay. I, I, so just help me, like if the shoulder is not level, I'll be thinking there's something going on with the spine as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with everything you have said, um, but I just want to reinforce the word attitude um, because so many times when I'm practicing with guys' clinical examination, they watch the patient standing in a particular position and then they say the patient has a fixed flexion. Yeah. Thank you, Shuan. Thank you for that. That word. That's wrong. It must be the word attitude. Yeah. Thank you for that, Shuan. I, 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 good. You picked it up. Please. No one at inspectory level would say the word fixed and the word yeah deformity yeah it's just an attitude let's stick to that thank you Sean, for that good now we'll go on someone else Sean. you've done uh, uh you've done your gate you've described it and now you're going to do the trendelberg test is that right yes sir fantastic so joe before that uh everyone i want you to uh, i want you to say i want you to first of all be very clear with your instructions so if you're in a place where the room is very cluttered Please, it's your responsibility. We want to make sure you take charge and we give you marks for being a consultant. So therefore, clear the room, all right? So the patient is not going to jump over chairs. So clear the room. And then the best is to tell the patient clearly, walk away from you and then give him instructions. Please turn around and walk towards me. That's the best way. And when you're doing that, 
The only thing, Joe, is the minute a patient started walking, you started giving an opinion. Is that correct, Joe? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, to a certain degree. So why, why do it straight away? The patient walked there. He was walking into the wall and you were speaking to me saying he had antalgic gait. Now that's probably not taking control because the patient may walk out of the, of the, of the examination. Mm -hmm. And hence, if you want to see front, back and side, see him walk in that manner and just look after him. So tell him, yes, walk towards the wall. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith. Turn around. Please walk towards me and then go to the side. So I'll do it like this. Uh, just check the camera. So imagine we are here. Can you see me here? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mrs. Smith, do you mind if you turn around and just walk, uh, yeah, come around, walk towards that wall. Thank you very much. Now, turn around and come and walk towards me. Yeah, thank you very much. And see what I'm doing? I'm just looking at the side. That's right. Thank you very much. Please uh, have a seat. Yeah. Now, and then immediately look at the examiner and say, this patient got an antalgic gait. Yeah. Right. Or this patient got a short limb gait. Or this patient got a trinal bird gait. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Have a seat, gentlemen. So before we go into the trinal bird test, very quickly, there's always a controversy uh, with the. Have a seat. As to in the clinical examination, my advice to all of you is please don't talk about he's walking with a good fo foot progression island. His step off is good, his toe off is good. Please, this clinical examination is only to demonstrate where you can pick up a clinical gait pattern. If they ask you later on what it is, please do so. But I'm telling you very clearly, after examining hundreds of people in my course, as well as uh, when they are preparing for the exam, is doing everything together. You're talking a lot of nonsense and not saying what you're saying. So let's all agree that we just identify the gait pattern and they'll test you on these other things on the viva. So, Let's start with each one, with you, Joe. What is the common... Uh, antalgic gait. So what is the antalgic gait? If I ask you, tell me about the antalgic gait. What is the antalgic gait? It is a shortened um, stance, gait, uh, stance phase of the uh, affected limb. Right. So the patient has the shortest a shortest amount of time. Swing phase stance. Of the Correct. Yeah. Can, you get, can you tell me another, uh, the next common uh, gait? We'll do it for uh, about five minutes. Trendlenburg gait, which yes, is... Yes, thank you very much. Can you please tell me what you understand by a Trendlenburg gait? Uh, a Trendlenburg uh, gait is that the patient is trying to um, uh, compensate for weak, um, uh, for weak abductors by swinging the uh, center, of uh, center of the gravity over the affected uh, limb. Okay. And so what exactly happens in the clinical scenario? Uh, you've he, said it right. He's but... doing the Trendlenburg lurch which is okay. uh, yeah. yeah so joe for and for everyone the way i would say this is a common question it could be asked in your viva and if the mentors don't mind i can just talk about it here but it's very commonly can be asked in the clinical is you can say in a trendelberg gate you can start by saying the basis principles of the trendelberg gate and the test is as follows you can say in when a patient stands on his normal hip and start with that joe the best advice i'll give you when you're trying to explain something, say what happens normally. So when yeah. a patient stands on a normal hip, the pelvis of the other side raises, and that is normal. You agree, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to make that statement. So when the patient stands on the normal hip, the pelvis of the opposite side raises, and this is normal. Then say, if a patient has a trend in a positive Trendelberg gait or a test, when the patient stands on his affected or his bad hip, the pelvis of the other side dips. And this is the principle of the trend gait. So clear how simple it is. Happy with that, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. So that's your second. What is the third commonest gait in orthopedics? Uh, just one question, sir. Uh, yeah. Is the, uh, is the dipping of the pelvis happens during the gait or happens during the test? I mean, don't worry about it now, I'll okay. because the reason is that both the principles is what we are talking about, right? Yeah. Then yeah. as to what happens where your center of gravity goes, you know, it's yeah. a matter for discussion. But what I'm trying to say yeah. is no, you're saying anything else when the basic principles, what you're picking up is this. Yeah. In other okay. words, you're, it's very clear when a patient is walking in a Trindleberg gait pattern, the opposite yeah. pelvis dips down. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what is yeah. clear. So the third yeah. comment is? Uh, a high stiffage gait. Uh, yeah, before that, let's stick to uh, bilateral, so bilateral trenilberg, which is called a waddling gait. Do you agree? Waddling? 
Yeah, yeah. lovely. So that's the third. Fourth would uh, be short limb. Yeah, short limb. So what happened in the short limb? Uh, happened in the short limb that the um, uh, the patient actually uh, ex have an exaggerated uh, knee flexion uh, of the uh, unaffected side were uh, on the stance in the stance. Correct, but that's yeah, one and more. But from the pelvis point of view, or, what can happen? The pelvis or, of that side dips down because that's the only way he can get his foot plant degrade, right? Yeah, or vocal, so in a short or circumduction limb. gait. That's yeah. all for the short limb gait. You're short. You don't let circumduction. Just call it a short limb because the pelvis of that affected side will be lower because that's the only way you can get this foot plant degrade. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. Next, we'll go on to in orthopedics. There will be you can talk about the high stepping gait, which is high a foot drop. Yeah, foot drop. Yeah, foot drop gait. Now there are three gates in cerebral palsy. Can you tell me three gates in cerebral palsy which you know? Scissoring gate due to overacting adductors at the hip. Fantastic. So everyone, uh, this is a. Why I'm covering this is because you're going to get ch children with cerebral palsy. They'll throw you. But if you have this system of talking, it's very clear. So, so add a, yeah, that's one. Number two. Um, uh, Equinus. Um, uh, Equinus due to... Uh, uh, Equinus where? Equinus yeah. happens at the ankle. At yeah. the ankle. Uh, yeah. Tiptoeing gait. Um, yeah. Tiptoeing uh, gait. So we call it tiptoeing gait. Due to contracture of the gastrocnemius or the tender Achilles. And yeah. uh, crouch gait if... Uh, the uh, if tendo Achilles uh, lengthening happened before hamstring release or uh, yeah, crouching it, if flexion the crouch, hip knees, crouch gate, which is flexion of the knee and uh, yeah. uh, uh, flex, exaggerate flexion of the knee, flexion of the hip, and yeah. um, uh, the patient actually uh, uh, try to uh, increase the energy expenditure. Okay, by that's fine. And the third one in cerebral palsy will be. Uh, a wind swiped, yeah. Wind swiped, yeah. Sorry, yeah. wind swiped yeah. gate. So you can have for... adduct, uh, is a wind swiped gate, yeah. Yeah. So that's the third one. Yeah. And in neurological gates, just to complete, I want you to keep in mind Parkinson's gate will be shuffling. Yes. Happy with that? Yeah. Yes. Say, th then will be a ataxic gate. Wide based, yeah. Ataxic, which is a wide based gate. Wide based gate. Yeah. Yeah. And the cervical myelopathy, wide based yeah. gate. Exactly, or ataxic, so posterior column involvement, so really wide based, mm -hmm. and circumduction, which will be in hemiplegic. Yeah? So we've covered nine or ten gates, and this will cover most of your uh, work. Yeah. Yeah. Happy with that, Joe? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank Sean you. and the others, is anyone anything else you'd like to add for gate? Or no, you've covered it from my point of view. Covered everything. Right. Uh -huh. But do you agree? Uh, I just want to ask the mentors. Do you agree? My feeling is, and I know you all have you know, done a lot of examination, examined candidates, that my feeling is when, patient, when candidates are always taught in courses to, you know, yes, please describe the gate, talk about the foot progression. My feeling is no one has the skills or you're so stressed, you can't talk all these phrases mm -hmm. and assess the patient and talk sense. So that's why yeah. I'm telling you not to. Do you agree with that? Uh, I agree. It's very yeah. easy to make an error and then all and the, an examiner can seize upon that and start asking you questions exactly. and, take you, and take you away from what you're there to do, which is examine the hip. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for that. That's what I'm telling everyone. So don't forget that. Perfect. It's a waste of time. It's not a clinical examination part. So Fantastic. Fantastic. It's, it's take a question. Uh, talk about the rockers. I think it's not necessary to put yourself to talk about the rockers and so just make it simple. Yeah, I'm happy with that, uh, Ezenol. But for you and for the other mentors, be a little careful of this because my tip to you is that, that you'll be so tense after doing the walking, because you know, walking, you're going to get the room ready and things, that you may forget to do a tunnel work. Your mind may forget you and you may make the patient go straight to the couch. So, my tip to you and my tip to others is not a scientific tip, it's just a practical tip so you don't forget is front back side inspection, hold my hands, do Trenelberg, thank you very much. Please walk there, walk back, please lie down on the couch. So this is my statement, so you'll never forget. Yeah? But please don't change your pattern, but I'm just warning you that you may forget Trenelberg because the patient's walking all over the place. Yeah. If anyone okay. noticed just there, um, uh, Mr. Mark Vazuala, um, at the end of his gate, he told the patient to sit on the couch. And every one of you, I can guarantee, thought, well, he's Mr. Trendelenburg. That's because he always stays consistent. He always does the Trendelenburg first, 
than the yeah. gait. And yeah. it's important to develop your consistency so you, it becomes exactly. instinct later on. So the instinct for me was that my statements are the same in my clinic, in real life, for every case I do the same thing. So you just, as long as your phrases <laughs> coming out of your mouth as in all are the same, right? So let's okay. imagine you're doing it any time. And now, how do you want to do it? So uh, this is the patient. Imagine okay. you're doing the Trenelberg. I know okay. it's very difficult, but let's uh, do it together. Okay. So imagine I'm you. You tell me whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. Yeah? Very good. So have a seat. So for everyone, the, very good. Isn't it? I think you handled it perfectly. Your phrase was good. Uh, but a few points. Yeah. The first point is uh, when you finish it, I want you to tell him, thank you very much. Put your hands down. Please have a seat on the couch. Immediately turn to the examiner and say the Trendelberg test was positive or the Trendelberg test was negative. All right. Okay. But don't talk and don't, please don't. All of you are taught to when he's holding your hands, he's worried, he's falling over and you're talking about, yes, the shoulders are coming over. My left hand is going over. Don't say all that. We all know what you're doing. The most important person is who? The examiner or the patient? Tell me, isn't it? It's the patient. Right. So forget the examiner. Finish that. Put it down and say it's because positive or negative. So let's do it like this. Okay. The other point to give you. So the first thing is don't get into arguments with your colleagues about whether you should go down and hold the pelvis and go. There are many ways of doing it. My advice to both patients is do this, which is the Apley's modification. We don't have to say it, but that's the best way. The way of doing it, going down like this, I'm not criticizing it, but I'm telling you it's sometimes difficult to do in, in older people. It's difficult to verbalize to a patient. So this is the way I do it. So the first stage is, you know, is like you said, stand in front of me. Please hold my hands and put your hands as I do. Now, one of the things I, I do as well is don't say left or right. Do you agree? Okay. Ask the patient, Mr. Smith, which is your bad hip? The, the left one. Yeah. So ask him that first. That's your first name. Say, which is your bad hip? Yeah, he'll say left one. Then say, Mr. Uh, Smith, I want you to stand on the good side. Happy to say that, is it not? Yes. So I want you to stand on the good side and do as I do. Yeah? Very clear instructions. Happy with that? Yes. That's fine. Thank you very much. Now, I'm saying, I know it's difficult, but I want you to stand on the bad side and do as I do. Oh, yes. You're certainly bending over. Thank you very much. Please have a seat on the couch. The Trendenburg test was positive. Yeah, is it not? No, I would agree. It's very, it's very important to not worry about left and right because the patient's going to be nervous. You'll be nervous. So just exactly. as you said, what's your bad hip? What's your good hip? Copy me. Yeah, fantastic. Exactly. Simple words. And this is what gives us, we know that a patient will be difficult. We know he's going to fall over. Yeah. And please don't get into arguments about should I do it for one minute or 30 seconds or 70 seconds. You know, do it for a reasonable length of time, which you feel appropriate, which you would do in a clinic and where you'll get your judgment. Mm -hmm. um, and imagine you're not getting it you can always say Missy, is it all right can we do it a little longer it's important for me you know you're telling the examiner mm -hmm. indirectly telling you're telling the patient but indirectly telling the examiner that you're doing it as long as you can yeah yeah um, there is a i don't know how, what the other mentors feel about this um i tend to ask the patient to lift their uh, bad leg off the ground mm -hmm. exactly the same way as you have Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I cop, I, I, I do the same thing as in I show them what I want them to do so that yeah. their bad leg is off the ground. Mm -hmm. But I don't actually, I keep my two legs planted when they lift their good leg off the ground, because mm -hmm. especially in the heavier elderly person, you may not yeah. be stable enough to hold on one leg. Let them counter your weight. If they've sure. got a strong timber. It's just a modification I've always done because yeah. I'm always worried that the patient drops in front of me in the exam. Thank you. Yeah. No, good. Bad point. And, a, and another point, sticking to what uh, Shuan has said, everyone, that's the reason why I feel bending forward, you know, bending on, pretty going on your knees, holding the patient by the pelvis, then looking up at him, then you tell him, lift your leg and he kicks you in the face. You know, these things happen and you're going backwards, he's falling over. That's the reason I don't do it in a traditional manner. Yeah, and we 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 we'll, we'll recommend. Is that all right for the method to say if you have time to practice, we'll recommend this, or is it too much to say that? Um, so, sorry, repeat that again. You know, there are many ways of doing the Trendelberg test. Some people bend down on their knees, hold the pelvis, and then tell the patient, okay. you know, 
I think I think I, I would that is dangerous. Down is time wasting, but also it's very awkward looking. Have you ever seen yeah. someone doing this, especially on a? Yeah. Uh, exactly. It it feels awkward. It looks awkward. Yeah. Exactly. You don't look professional. You have now got scuffed your trousers. Um, it just doesn't look right, and you you look as if you are not in control. Yeah. So, so therefore, can we recommend, Sean, that we do it this way and not the other way, just yeah. as a general recommendation? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Question that came up: uh, Mustafa has asked, uh, uh, "Sound side first is that necessary, or is it a waste of time in the real examination?" What do you mean, sound side first for what? For the Trendelenburg yeah. test? So lifting the lifting the bad leg up uh, yeah. first is a yeah. waste of time. No, I would say we have to do it because it's very important for two reasons. One is a patient knows what you're doing and the patient's confident to stand on his good left, good leg or lift the bad one. It doesn't matter. The phrase which you're using is lift the bad one or stand on the good one. Yeah. But I think it's vital to do because otherwise the confusion I see happening in this test is, is enormous. You know, The patient doesn't know what he's doing, whatever it is. So this is setting the stone for at least getting the confidence of you, your patient, and ultimately telling the examiner that I'm, I'm getting confident of what I'm doing. So I think it's vital we do the good side first. I would agree because um, you demonstrate they can do it on the good side. Yes, and Therefore exactly. show what, uh, what it looks like compared to the bad side. Excellent. And they could also have an arthritic hip on that side as well. Yeah. I've yeah, had that happen perfect. to me before. Or a previous uh, hip replacement, which you need to demonstrate their abductors yeah. are working well. Yeah. And what I do, in, and when we do our, my course, I everyone, I mean, all five, six people can just do the same thing. And I can demonstrate, I can actually do it in a minute and a half. You know, if, you, if the words come out correctly, it's a minute and a half. Yeah. Hmm. But if it's not, it'll take you five minutes, I'm telling you. Clarify a minute and a half from the moment they stand up, not yeah. each other, but of course, yeah. Correct. I think the best way to keep practicing the test and you develop your own technique considering all what we talked about and just in the exam you have to look professional you know what you're doing and you talk uh, in a clear way to the examiner and give clear instruction to the patient the best way is just to practice it every opportunity in the clinic even if you examine knee try to do tenderbird test and make sure you're happy with it you're confident absolutely, with skills. absolutely. Uh, this this is seems to generate some controversy. This uh, Trendelenburg test. Um, another comment. Uh, sorry, uh, Mustafa um, commented that uh, he's been at a previous course. That course will not be mentioned. Um, but uh, he's been told that um, to do it with kneeling down with the patients resting their arm. Every all the exams. Um, I, I'll give you a, an example of why it's not a good idea. One of my colleagues, he's a very slight lady. She's a very good surgeon. She did it that way and she had a very big patient. So uh, um, it just, it doesn't look right. And, it's, and, and, you're not, and as we've said, you're not in, um, you're not in control. Yeah. So I, I would say, um, as Schwan as says as well, yeah, if you have to put one foot down, you may have a really uh, arthritic elderly patient who could be any size. Um, you don't want them toppling over you. Yeah, and, and, and I think catch yeah, them when you're standing. You can't catch them from the pelvis. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah. My my feeling is that look, you know, I I think what I'm trying to get at, and all of us are trying to tell you, is this passing of this exam is to demonstrate to your consultant colleagues that your consultant level the way you're talking, and if you do it in the manner which I've done it, or which one or any of my mentors will do it, and you're doing it in a slick manner with complete control mm -hmm. of the situation. I cannot accept that doing it in this way is wrong and that the, whoever said in the course is, is right. Yeah? So you need to do it slickly and pass. That, that, that's where we are. Yeah. Um, I, I, th this is like the minutiae detail. I mean, as long as you're comfortable and you're exactly. controlled and you're in the slick way of doing it, the examiner is exactly. going to be happy. If you're looking uncomfortable like you've never done it before, they'll know. Yeah. yeah, and if you do it kneeling down and you're happy and slick with it, fantastic. You know, I'm saying that's perfect to do. So I won't change anyone who does it in that manner, provided once again you're talking well and talking slickly. So yeah, that's, that's excellent. Okay. Uh, I like that. Chet, have you noticed? Chet and said classically is described from the back. So yeah. even the other courses said it's wrong. It's got it wrong as well. So um, I've not. I've, I'll, if you could do it from the back, I'll be very impressed. No, yeah, yeah I, I don't think anyone would recommend it from the back because you can't see the patient. Yeah, so um, all this is about you being con in control. Uh, but yeah, the, there's no point in describing it.